a lot to be excited about. I think, you know, being in the water industry, we're in a critical industry. Everybody needs water. You know, everything that we have, everything that we do, somehow, in some way, water is an input. So it's, it's exciting to be in water to begin with, but I think one of which is that the way we continue to grow as an organization, our staff grows, um, we're growing physically, we're growing you know, regionally, uh, I think is, is really exciting to watch. And it's also exciting to see as we have some of our most senior people are, are starting to retire and exit the industry, we have some really good dynamic young people that are, are stepping in and filling the voids that they're leaving behind. So it's just a lot of fun to watch that. Yes, um, to a lesser degree about COVID or the pandemic and really to the biggest degree is related to climate change. You know, the frequency and severity of droughts that we're seeing, wildfires like we've never seen before, um, climate volatility. Uh, as populations continue to increase, there's more and more competition for limited water resources, particularly out here in the West. So um, if you're a water provider providing reliable, high quality water service to your growing population is becoming more and more complex. And we can't just plan the way we have in the past. We can't just extrapolate trends of data we've seen. We can't just look at that historical data. We have to be comfortable with ambiguity. We have to be able to see patterns we've never seen before, extremes, and be able to respond to those things and, and not be flat-footed. Yeah, there's lots of things. Uh, I think a couple that come to mind are we are starting to wade into software as a service. You know, we've had a technology group that does amazing things with water supply and water quality data, and we're looking at delivering that service in a different way. You know, more in the subscription model versus a kind of a one-off type project engagement uh, with clients. So that's something to look for. Uh, secondly, is we're starting to use more probabilistic modeling techniques than deterministic because kind of coming back to that question about what do you think is one of the biggest sort of issues or challenges when it comes to things like climate variability, we don't know exactly what the exact answer is going to be. We really have to rely and look at more on probabilities to, to navigate things going forward. So that's something we're doing much more of is that uh, probabilistic modeling. Another thing I would say, particularly in water, what we're seeing more and more of is aquifer storage and recovery. So looking at other alternatives than traditional surface storage. Um, uh, even large traditional surface water providers are looking at what about you know, using you know, groundwater in their systems? What about using aquifers to store water than inundating large areas of land to, to build reservoirs and things? So I think that's something that, you know, it's certainly a core service of ours and we see more and more clients being interested in.